Final Cut Pro is packed with hundreds of amazing built-in effects, but I'm pretty sure you probably don't have the time to look through all of them. So that's what I did. In this video, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of amazing built-in effects inside of Final Cut Pro so you can take your video editing to the next level. The first effect on this list is the visual echoes effect. I wanna only apply this effect directly onto this runner, so we're gonna use a magnetic mask. First, let's duplicate the shot by pressing Option and clicking and dragging. From there, we'll go over to our magic wand, clicking that down arrow, we'll select Add Magnetic Mask, and then we'll select the runner. Once we're happy with our selection, we can go ahead and analyze. Now that it's done analyzing, I'm gonna press done in the top right corner. Before we add any effects, I'm gonna push option, click and drag, and duplicate the shot one more time. With this topmost layer selected, let's press V to disable that, and we can start applying effects onto the second row. So like I said, the first effect we wanna take a look at is visual echo. And funny enough, I think this effect was accidentally misplaced when they created it. You'll need to scroll down and locate under tiling the visual echo effect. We'll click and drag and apply that onto our shot. And if we push play, you can start to see it take place here in the legs, but let's go ahead and improve this effect by dragging up the amount and the duration. And you can start to see how this creates a really interesting looking shot because we've got the runner, but we've also kind of got a latent motion blur version of that same runner. So you can play around with these different variables and find out what works best for you but I'm just gonna max them out for this particular video. Now, earlier we went ahead and disabled the shot on the very top. I'm gonna re-enable that with V. So by re-enabling that, you can see how we're getting that really interesting effect underneath our runner, but you can also still very clearly see her. And that brings me to the second effect, colorize. I'm gonna disable that topmost layer for right now, and let's go over to our effects under the color panel and locate colorize. I'll apply that onto that shot, and you'll notice that it's remapping the black values to a dark red and the white values to a light red. Let's just play around with these. I'm gonna push these to a kind of a bright pinky, purple, magenta, whatever you wanna call that color. And let's change our black values over to maybe a bright blue. And this is gonna make sense in just a little bit when we apply the next effect. Then from there, we could even drag up the intensity if we wanted to. Now this is looking pretty cool with our runner, but let's take it to the next level with the next effect, which is the neon effect. To locate the neon effect, you'll just need to scroll on down until you see text effects and you'll find neon right here. I personally don't think the neon effect should specifically only apply to text. It can be applied onto say interesting shots like this. So let's just click and drag the neon effect. And now we've got this interesting glow. We can drag up the outer brightness, the outer glow values. Maybe bring up the inner brightness, get this looking exactly as you want it, take up that edge intensity. And so last but not least, if we go ahead and enable that topmost shot with V, you can see how we're getting this really interesting glowing effect. It's got this cool echo to it, and it almost looks like she's kind of got some superpowers. We could even make it look like she's more part of that glow by taking her feather and dragging that down so she's kind of got this edge glow around her. The next effect we're gonna take a look at is the droplet effect. I love using droplet for shock waves. So taking a look at this particular shot, you can see we've got this text that pops into place, but I wanna make it really have a strong impact. And in fact, I might as well throw in a bonus effect. Let's select our title. We'll go up to our blend modes and change it from normal over to difference. And now you can see it's kind of giving us this cool transparent negative version of what's lying underneath. But moving on to the actual effect, you can locate that under distortion over here on the right side, and you can see droplet. Let's just apply this onto the underlying layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and disable the text for right now. I've created a marker where the text lands right here, and we can go ahead and see these different settings up here in the top right corner. So we can drag up the intensity and you'll see how that's really adjusting that ripple effect. You can adjust the radius and we can adjust the thickness. So what I do is I drag all of these sliders down to zero to start off the effect. And we find the first keyframe, which will be right here at this marker. We'll click to add a keyframe on all of the different values and we'll move forward about a second or so. From there, let's drag the intensity and the radius all the way up and we could adjust that thickness too. So now if we push play, we should have this really cool looking ripple effect out from the center. So that's how you can add an interesting shockwave into your videos all directly inside of Final Cut Pro. Now, before I jump into the last two built-in effects, I did want to quickly mention my Motion Tools plugin, which comes with over 160 different tools and effects 
for Final Cut Pro from Apple Motion. We have just a basic title here inside of Final Cut Pro, and I can look up my motion tools effect, and let's use the oscillate behavior. I'll apply that on, and the oscillate behavior is gonna give us this nice hovering motion. We could drag up the amplitude if we want, and that's looking pretty cool. We could also set it to half range, and now it's got this nice little bouncing motion. So it's up to you how you want this to look. Now that we've got that oscillate motion set up, let's look up another effect, which is echo. This is similar to the visual echo effect built into Final Cut Pro, but it actually has a lot more sliders. So we'll apply that onto our title, and you can see how that's giving us this interesting result. We could drag up the number if we want, so there's even more echoes happening here. Maybe we'll adjust the decay so it's decaying a little bit faster. But the next effect we're gonna take a look at is one of my favorites, and it's called Gradient Colorize. So I'll look that up again here in the Motion Tools effects, and I can apply that onto our title. Everything's gonna turn red. Let's scroll down through our effects, and you'll see that we've got this gradient happening, but nothing's really happening to our title. That's because it's mapping currently to the luminance channel, and we want it to map to the alpha channel of our text because it's decaying and slowly becoming more and more transparent. So let's change the map channel over to alpha, and now you can see that as it's dissipating, it's turning more and more green. We can change this over to a nice orange color, maybe add a center point here, change that over to a magenta color, and last but not least, let's turn this over to a bright blue effect. And then on top of that, we could go ahead and add in the neon effect, which Final Cut Pro has built in. And so now we've got this really crazy looking glow. We can adjust all the different values here, get it to our liking. But another thing we can do is adjust the offset. So all we need to do is come to the beginning, click to add a keyframe on the offset, go to the last frame, and hold shift and drag up on the offset. And this is just going to send it through a whole bunch of times. And pushing play, you can see how we have this great looking animation on our title. But obviously it's kind of hard to read this text. So let's duplicate this title up above. And I'm going to delete everything except for the oscillate animation. And now you can see that this text has this really cool trail effect that has this nice neon glow and it's constantly changing colors. So that is just barely scratching the surface of everything you can do with the Motion Tools plugin. If you're interested, there's a link down below as well as a special discount code as a thank you for watching this video. This next effect is a really cool one I learned from Dylan John. We can go ahead and locate that over in light and it's called Streaks. Let's apply it onto the city shot and you can see how we're getting all of these crazy streaks across the frame. But what's interesting about this effect is it only applies to the lightest parts of the image. So you can see as these cars are driving by down here in the bottom right corner, the effect is actually updating and adding more streaks. So if we go over to the right side, we can adjust the amount, maybe back it way down, take our thickness, adjust that to our liking, keep it really subtle. We could adjust the threshold, so this is just how often you're going to see streaks based on how bright parts of the image are. You can adjust the glow, bring that up. We could add in some variation, which is cool. It's going to kind of add a shimmer effect onto the streaks. And then we could even change the color of these streaks to better match our video. And the last effect we're going to take a look at was just recently added inside of Final Cut Pro 11, and that is the callout effect. We can locate it over here on the right side under reframe and we can select the callout effect. Now, I could apply this directly onto this shot if we wanted to, but I find with this callout effect, I actually prefer to use it as a title. And to use it as a title, there's a handy feature that came in Final Cut Pro 11.1, which is the adjustment clips. So we can apply an effect by selecting it and pushing Option A, and now that's going to drop in this effect as an adjustment clip. And what's awesome about this is if this particular shot had any cuts in it, this callout effect wouldn't be affected, and it'll just sit up on top of everything. And not only that, but we can also adjust the duration of this callout effect so we can make it shorter or longer and still keep the consistency of our underlying shot. Taking a look at the callout effect, we can select it, make sure it's selected over here on the right side, and moving ahead, we can see how it animates it into place. We can adjust this box to our liking. Let's say that we want to zoom in down on this boat, which is really cool. We could adjust the inset scale by dragging this up. Let's get rid of that color mix in the background and the blur and move this down into a better spot. Maybe we'll increase the outline and the outline width. We could even change the color of that outline, go for a nice blue color, and we could also adjust that offset. 
And what's awesome is this particular effect is completely animated for us, so it pops out pops back in. If this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing. We are so ridiculously close to 75,000 and I'm really hoping we can hit 100k before the end of the year. So if you're interested in helping me achieve that goal, maybe consider subscribing.